right. Okay, so here we are. We've now gone through quite a bit of categories of applications. What I want to do, and our, our such is I what my my good friend Lloyd, who's right here, he's sitting over next to me, though he's thousands of miles apart, is we want to look at the statement of faith, the creed. We have the Nicene Creed that that we follow that kind of gives a impetus for we go to that keeps us directed. What is the creed? Now, some people have said the Shahada is the creed, but that's only really, there is only one God, Muhammad is his prophet. There is another creed that you're going to introduce that is much more exact and also much more encompassing. So over to you, Lloyd, what is that creed that you're going to introduce to us to help us understand what the motivation is for that which Muslims do? All right. Hi, Jay. So just as we have the Nicene Creed, which in Christianity defines our orthodox beliefs, that these are the things that we accept, these are the things we have faith in, these are the things that are standard within Christianity. When I say orthodox, I don't mean a particular orthodox church, but uh, which are standard within our belief set. Islam also has what they call their Akida, right? And let me bring that up on screen. So the Akida really dates more or less to, it was formalized, let's say, within the ninth century. So the ideas have been around for a long time, but so this is the basic orthodoxy of Islam known as the Akida. So Akida refers to those matters of faith which are believed in with certainty and conviction in one's heart and soul. They are not tainted with any doubt or uncertainty. So this reinforces what I said before, that Muslims are to believe with no doubt, utter certainty, despite a lack of knowledge. So that was in one of the previous episodes. And of course, this also then reinforces some of the hadiths and the Quranic verses that, that people are probably familiar with, at least in passing. But understand that these statements are beliefs. So there's a long list of these. There are, there are multiple different ones of these. You can go and look them up online. You'll find that they have certain consistent ideas and certain individual ideas, depending on which school or which one you're looking at. Now, like the Nicene Creed, this Akida establishes orthodox beliefs and it refutes deviations. It is the foundation of the Islamic faith. Now, there are additional things which are foundations of the faith, but let's focus here. Now, the Akida consists of matters which are known from the Quran and sound a hadith, and which the Muslims must believe in his heart. Now, notice this is a very interesting nuance, which the Muslim must believe in his heart. He does not have to express it with his mouth. Now, there's a difference between, interestingly, God is Logos. Allah is will. Logos relates to the word. Now, it has a context of the spoken word to speak the truth. The Logos is logic. The Logos is truth. It is non-contradictory logic. But understand the Logos has a context of the spoken word to speak the truth. Here, a Muslim must believe it in his heart. He does not have to speak it, which lends itself to the concept of taqiyya, if you want to tie it into that. Now, a Muslim must believe this in his heart in acknowledgement of the truth of Allah and his messenger. Right? Now, popular statements of basic Sunni Islamic doctrine or articles of faith are, for instance, the Al-Qaeda al-Tahawiyya, the Ashari, the Maturidi, and there are others. So I'm just going to also make a note. Akida is considered a primary science in Islam. It is a science. Now, of course, the Islamic definition of science is not the Western definition of science. Now, note that this here, in his heart, that is a legal loophole. Remember, I stated before that Sharia law allows loopholes. So whatever the law states, there is going to be a loophole. There is going to be an exception. Effectively, the only, well, there is nothing sacrosanct in Islam. There's nothing sacrosanct in Islamic law that cannot be broken, except perhaps one. The, the really... The closest thing to a sacrosanct law is that Muhammad must never be made to look imperfect. That is effectively the only sacrosanct law in Islam. Now, I'm going to show you just briefly from some of the points of this Akida number 73. We follow the Sunnah of the Prophet and the congregation of the Muslims, the Ummah, and we avoid deviation, differences, and divisions. So the four schools are the same religion. There is no real difference. There's a variation, a range, but they're not differences. We love the people of justice, those are Muslims, and trustworthiness, those are Muslims who are not heretics, who are not considered hypocrites, who are not apostates. And we hate the people of injustice and treachery, that's you, 
in case you were wondering who that was. They are meant to hate you. And 75, when our knowledge about something is unclear, we say, Allah knows best. If you've wondered where that statement comes from, it's nearly a thousand years old or more than a thousand years old. And this is something that Muslims are required to say. When we don't know something, we say, Allah knows best. And we stop thinking at that point. We don't investigate further because that would incur doubt. Doubt is illegal. So your thoughts there? Jay, I'll leave this here. Fascinating. So this in some ways supports what you were talking about earlier in your whole video on the doubt. We, they are not permitted to doubt. They are just permitted to accept blindly and uh, without any uncertainty. They just must follow. That's really what the statement of faith is. If in doubt, just say, Allah knows better than I do. I don't understand it, but Allah knows. Therefore, I just do it, follow it. Ironically, what is really happening is the mujtahid, uh, the mujtahids know what is best. Those four men in the ninth century knows what is best. I, I just want to pick up, before we end, I want to pick up that statement. You must believe in your heart, but not in your mouth openly. Don't say what you believe. In other words, this now makes sense. Their statement of faith is something you just believe, but you don't actually talk about it. You don't openly speak, defend it, which is one reason why we found so much confusing things that they do say, because they're not really saying what they really believe. Ironically, let's compare that with our reference for Paul in Romans. Remember what Paul says in Romans in chapter 10? Let me just read it here. Romans 10 verse 9 that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from dead, you will be saved. This is our confession of faith. Our confession of faith is just the opposite of what you're bringing up here. Our confession starts with saying what you believe and then believing in your heart. The two have to go together. We don't hide this. We don't sublimate it. We actually explain it. That's why we are so transparent about our faith. And if you don't say what you believe, we see that as not only as subterfuge, we see that as deviation, we see that as traitorism, and we also see that as lying. Can you see? Our whole statement of faith does stipulate that you must say what you believe. If you don't say what you believe, then you can't believe it. And that's why in some ways, the whole Western ethos of what is considered to be right and wrong is based on that dictum. Romans 10 verse 9 it has always been the basis of our law, has been the basis of everything we believe. And can you understand in some ways why we're just com completely clashing with Islam? We're going right past them here because we have always assumed, and this is something I'm not talking, now I'm talking to a lot of Westerners. I hear Westerners say this all the time. They come up to me and say, Jay, you're always talking about uh, the violence of Islam, but my next door neighbor, the Greek grocer down the street, he's a Muslim. He's the most peaceful man I've ever met. Everything I hear coming out of his mouth is peace, 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 love, 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 love. How can you say that Islam is not loving of the unbeliever? How can you say that Muslims are the most peaceful peace are not the most peaceful on earth. When you look and see what my next door neighbor is saying, or my friend down the street, or the you know the the new uh, the new uh, the new Muslim that's coming to the class, they don't represent anything. I hear you saying, Jay, and I've always said yes. That's exactly what they're supposed to say. That's exactly what you're going to hear, because they do not say what they believe. Okay, are you hearing this, people? Are you hearing what Lloyd's bringing out? They must believe in their heart, but they not, not, do not need to say openly what they believe. There are many words for it. Some of you, you use the word takia. I know Lloyd's going to do a whole series of looking into this because this is so endemic with Islam. Islam. We need to give mm -hmm. it a lot more importance of it. And that has an awful lot to do with why so many Westerners have no idea of what Islam really stands for, what it believes. Even Muslims do not know what they believe, and they're not aware of what Lloyd has just brought up. Because many of those in their mosques, many of their fellow Muslims will not even tell them what they are really to do or to say or how to act because of this statement of faith, this Akida. Akida is very much, you just believe it, you just memorize it, and 
Allah knows best. It's not for you to try to unpack it. It's not for you to try to understand it. And it's certainly not for you to try to speak it out loud so others can hear you. God bless you. This has been great. Thank you so much. Hugely important. Now we can understand why so many, many of us with the Muslims that we're coming across, we're talking right past each other. We don't even know where they're coming from. You're really helping us with this. This has been terrific, Lloyd. All right. Thousands of miles apart. Welcome. Hey, and Lloyd, over now. Take care, everyone. God bless. Thank you.